Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing something different and I'm not going to be talking about science, but I'm going to be talking about English. So uh, I'm just going to be showing you this journal that I had to make for this assignment that my school gave me about a year and a half ago, where I had to compose a poem to the sequel of The Lost Dances of Fans by Julie Tolson. Also funny thing, I actually recorded this entire video before and then I realized that my microphone audio wasn't recorded and now I'm recording it again. So a double work for me. So basically, as I was telling you, this is uh, a sequel to the poem, The Lost Dance of Crayons by Juliet Wilson. If you guys haven't read it and don't know who Juliet Wilson is, search her up, search the poem up and actually go through it because it does not fail to leave an impact on the minds of its readers. It has an extremely strong and bold message and actually gives you a glimpse into the into like everyday truth where it talks about the life of these endangered animals. In this poem, as you can talk, as you can see, it talks about the bird cranes and um, how their habitat, the natural habitat, was ruined by the actions of humans. They built buildings and new infrastructure, the, in like the natural habitat of these cranes, and destroyed their habitat. So, what are we going to do about it? She she questions the humans and tells them that they should do something about it, not just regret about whatever they're doing. They should just sort of rule about whatever they, whatever her, their ancestors have done or whatever they would have done. should actually take a step forward and do something about it. So that's what the poem is about. And this is the journal. As you can see, it's a PDF. So sorry for that, but a year and a half ago, I just saved it in the form of a PDF. So what you're seeing is PDF. So, um, I had to make a journal where I had to document the different steps of drafting this poem. So different stages that I took to draft this poem. So you're going to just be seeing, you're going to be seeing um, the different stages that I took or the different um, ideas in my mind and how I actually put it on a piece of paper, etc. So this is the poem composing part of that assignment. And I named my I named my poem Memories, and it's a sequel to the poem The Lost Dance of Cranes by Juliet Wilson. Actually, if you look at it, Lost Dance of Cranes is actually a, a pun. So a dance, dancing is supposed to be one of like the cranes' uh, features or something like that, good qualities. So cranes are known for their, their like unique dances. So I'm sorry if I'm saying like a lot because I'm just framing it. I frame my sentence sentences on the go. So... I just use like as my sentence connector. Okay, so um, yeah. It, so if you see cranes, you have two meanings to cranes. One is the bird crane and one is the mechanical crane, which is used to build buildings. So the pun here is that these mechanical cranes that build buildings have actually destroyed the homes of these bird cranes. So if you get that, comment down below. So we'll, be we'll begin with a quote. Creativity is intelligence having fun by Albert Einstein. So I actually believe in this quote. What about you? So for this activity, we were given this whole, uh, we were given 10 words actually, 10 beautiful words that we had to incorporate in our um, poem. We had to at least use six of them out of 10. So these are just the 10, rejuvenating, opulent, vibrant, quaint, alluring, wilderness, blissful, paradisical, behold, and anew. Excuse me for the spelling of paradisical. I don't know what is going on in my mind. I haven't like checked this whole, um, I haven't checked this PDF for the past one and a half year. I didn't notice it the previous time I was recording. So I'm sorry for the spelling. Please ignore it. It's just that the A and the C have interchanged positions. So yeah, basically it. So I used, I think I used all 10 of them or maybe nine. But yeah, basically we were supposed to use at least six of them in our poem. So this is the making of the poem. Obviously, as you can see, there are only three points under each stanza. But uh, I had, obviously I had like 12, 13 points that I wanted to incorporate, but I couldn't put it on a piece of paper. So yeah. So in my school, at least, we have we have this thing called creative writing every year, where we have to write three uh, we have three writing tasks: descriptive writing, recount writing, and persuasive writing. Where um, we have a first draft, 
a second draft, and a final draft. The first draft is when we write and is checked by one of our classmates. The second draft is actually checked by the teacher, and she gives her, her recommendations and suggestions. Uh, and the third draft, or the final draft, is actually the final thing that you get. But this is not actually a creative writing task. It's, uh, it's basically a graded task. So the first draft that I wrote had three stanzas, stanzas and it was corrected by my friend. And as you can see, I forgot a title. And the final draft is, uh, is we don't have a second draft. The final draft is corrected directly by my teacher and is graded. She doesn't correct it, he grades it. So obviously I forgot the title and then I thought of memories. A very little thought went to it. I'm just like, the last minute, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll name it. Memories, that's it, end of story. So as you can see, I haven't used all of my words here. I just used, I think, uh four or five words in my first draft and i had to incorporate at least two more but i decided to incorporate like five more and make it nine or something so these are the changes i made and then i present to you and thus i present to you memories so i'll read it and then i'll try to explain it so um behold the quaint old countryside along the brook my slender snow white neck rose as my wings bathed in lucid flow of air Oh, how I wish it were not wings of two, but many. My pristine abode, once a vivid green blanket with gleaming silver clouds, now land of gl gritty concrete. The fields that once thronged with buggles are placed by the hollow wind. Humans have destroyed my home, have left me all alone. Oh, how will I tell my foes the dance in the graves of my brothers and sisters? Traditions believe I bring good fortune. I mean peace and tranquility. What wrong did my family commit to deserve this? Was it our alluring charm or blissful innocence that led to my species of solace? All you humans do is woo. If only you had taken a step forward, I wouldn't be living this solitary, solitary life. This paradisical wilderness wouldn't be so unadorned. If only you had taken a step. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. So um, I have five stanzas, as you can see. I incorporated like two more stanzas. I don't know why, but I had so many ideas that I just wanted to put on this, put it in this poem. So I, I added two more stanzas. So um, basically, you can see that it's the first person from the crane's point of view, and she talks about how she, um, how she's basically along a river, and as she bases her neck to look around, she only sees two wings and those are her two wings she doesn't see her family members what is a bunch of trains called a flock i think it's a flock i don't know if you know what it is please put down put it down in the comments below because i want to know so um i'll just be going with flocks right now and i'm going to be referring to this crane as sheep because i don't know why i just need to refer to her as sheep so uh um yeah so she talks about how she raises her neck and she sees that there are only two wings and those are her wings and not her flock's wings the next stanza talks about how she she talks about her previous habitat how it was a beautiful green place with um beautiful silver clouds and now it's just land and pretty concrete it's just what the humans have done they've built it into a modern world they have built buildings new infrastructure hospitals schools etc and have destroyed her natural habitat that was once her natural habitat that um then they talk about how then she talks about how the fields that once thronged with buckles buckles are the sounds that cranes make and um the, her fields that the fields that once were filled with these buggles that these cranes made that her flock made now it's just replaced by an empty hollow wind you can just hear the wind blowing passing by humans have destroyed my home have left me all alone it's very really dark i don't think i have to explain that to you guys how will i tell my colts colts are actually the children of cranes that's what a baby crane is called but she talks about how in the future if she has colts as i told you before they the dancing of cranes is, is uh the dance of cranes is supposed to be unique a unique feature of theirs so it talks about how when they dance how will i tell my my kids my goals that they're dancing on the deathbed of her aunts and uncles the cranes the cranes brothers and sisters 
Traditions believe I bring good fortune. So, so according to Japanese culture, I think crayons are supposed to mean good fortune. They're supposed to mean peace and tranquility. That's why you see origami crayons. Basically, that's the whole plot behind it. She talks about how people think that I bring good fortune and tranquility and mean peace and tranquility. But then she says, what wrong did my family do to deserve this? Was it how beautiful they were or how innocent they were? that led to the destruction of her species. And then she says, all these humans do have is regret. They just look at videos, documentaries, um, etc., and just say, oh my God, how I wish I could have done that. Or why did they do that? Why didn't our ancestors actually take a step against it? But they don't realize that they should, should, they should not only regret, but actually do something, take any action against it. There's still time to do something to save what's left of my species, and they can at least do it. Why Why do they just regret and not do anything and just comment and not actually take any action against what's happening? If they had done something and not just regret it, I wouldn't be living this lonely life. This habitat of mine, this new habitat of mine, would not be so empty, would, would not be so deserted. I would have my flock here. But if this would only be possible if you had done something about it. Yeah, pretty much this. I'm sorry, this is so dramatic and that I'm just like, yeah, that's pretty much it. But that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching. But before I go, please subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with your family and friends. Thank you and bye.